Hello and welcome to Total Health with Dr. Nick. And if you're new to my show, my purpose is very simple. And that is to inspire, empower, and motivate you to live longer, healthier, and more abundant lives. And I said I wasn't going to do it. I wasn't going to jump on the bandwagon here. But you know what? I'm getting too many questions about it. And I felt I just needed to chime in and give my input, give my experience, and really give my knowledge as to the Jillian Michaels how do you say it? Keto rant. I mean, she went off on keto numerous places, numerous times with Steve Harvey. But there's one in particular on the big think that I want to address. And I really think, you know, it's, it bothers me a lot when celebrities use their celebrity to try to influence really how the world is working and how people think and how people operate and so on. And really just chime in with their opinions. And no doubt she's got tremendous experience. Of course, she was on the the, the biggest loser and so on competition. But, um, you know, you look at the things that she said and it really doesn't make a lot of sense. So I want to rebut that. Obviously, she's got a tremendous amount of experience in the fitness world, but I don't think she's got a lot of experience when it comes to nutrition and just body physiology, how the body works. So here we go, guys. Let's get ready to rumble. All right. I'm, I'm, I promise I'm going to be nice about this. I'm not going to rip in too much. I'm going to just give you my honest opinion about what's going on. So let's start looking at the clip. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to literally uh, just comment about each segment after I'm done with each part. So here we go. Let's jump right in. How do we really decipher the thousands of studies that are out there on all of these diets? And the problem is what people will do to try to sell you a false bill of goods. Okay, <laughs> first of all, let's start off with the false bill of goods. You know, guys, I could tell you that, sure, there's people out there that try to make money off of keto, that try to sell products, that try to, you know, extract as much money out of your wallet as possible. But, uh, you know, on my show, I don't do that. You know, I've been asked many times to do a, a cookbook on keto because we're doing a lot of keto shows, a lot of keto uh, recipes and cooking demonstrations. So I might get around to that, but I don't sell anything on here. I don't really promote anything unless it's things that I'm using that will hopefully give you uh, a really an advantage so that way you can get the most out of your dieting in your life and so on. But if anybody is selling stuff online, I mean, we have to look right here. I mean, come on. She's got everything from books to apps to diet pills. And that's one of the things that really rubs me the wrong way is when she's out promoting a healthy lifestyle and a healthy way to do things. And you'll see that towards the end of the video. Um, you, you really don't want to throw in diet pills and fat burners. I mean, those things are, are the biggest fad. You know, my dad used to take Dexatrim back in the 80s, and that's how far back these things go. And they're probably looking at diet pills even sooner or before that. But, you know, this is the kind of stuff. I mean, this is hawking all kinds of goods and, and things when you've got an app that I believe, and I don't know for sure that there's even a monthly subscription rate to it. I mean, you know... <laughs> Let's call the kettle black here. You know, you've got a lot of uh, product you're promoting yourself. All right, let's go to the next part. Is take one study and blow that study out as though it's the entire picture. Okay, I, first of all, I don't know what study she's talking about. I can tell you that keto is relatively new as far as the name of it because, um, you know, it was really more created back in the early 20s for patients who had more epileptic seizures. But the reality is this is the way our ancestors have been eating for 100,000 years. So this isn't something new based on some recent study, some recent fad, or some, you know, doctor that just showed up on TV and said, hey, this is the way to go now. So this is nothing to do with some study. I will tell you, though, if you want to talk about studies that were absolutely made up and fabricated, you want to go back to the study that's actually changed the way humans eat for the past 50 or 60 years. And this is the seven country study. And I'll tell you what, one of the biggest promo uh, proponents for people who are to get off of fat and get off of fat diets and start to eat more healthy whole grains, as they call it, was Ansel Keys. Ansel Keys was a top advisor to Dwight Eisenhower back in the 50s. And he had the ear of the country because anything he said went. They started changing policies, changing procedures, changing the way Americans ate, and it literally spread across the world. When he started to look at 
it's called a seven country study, but in reality it was about 22 countries, but he cherry picked the information out. And countries that did not show the hypothesis that he was looking for, which is his lipid, lipid hypothesis, and that was that saturated fats and fatty foods caused cholesterol and clogging of the arteries. Whichever countries did not fit that mold, he took out of the study. So he cherry picked it. So if anybody is guilty of fabricating studies, that then impacted the way we eat for decades. And I'm telling you, probably caused, you now it's going to be a little bit um, you know, inflammatory here, but caused the death of millions of people because they got onto these highly inflammatory diets by increasing their healthy whole grains. And next thing you know, obesity went through the roof and people started dying then of heart disease and diabetes and increased rates of cancer. This is the study that started it all. all right? Let's go to the next part before I go on more of a rant here. So when we look at keto, here's why we're saying, or not me, but here's where some of the advocates are espousing benefits. Well, what are we doing with keto, right? We're removing carbohydrates. All right, cut. Just cut right there. First of all, keto is not no carb. All right, let's get that straight. Keto is low carb, but no carb. It's virtually impossible for you to be able to take 100% of carbohydrates out of your diet unless you're eating purely oil. If you're just drinking oil all day, coconut oil, olive oil, any kind of oils, uh, avocado oil, things like that, that's how you're going to get zero carbs. But keto is not a zero carb diet. You are getting carbohydrates. And even if you're not getting enough carbohydrates, your body can convert proteins to carbohydrates through gluconeogenesis. So by the way, I want you to realize something. Carbohydrates are not an essential nutrient to the body. That's right. We have essential fatty acids and we have essential amino acids, but there are no essential carbohydrates. So carbohydrates aren't even essential because they can be manufactured by what the body has as raw materials inside, namely protein. So that's just absolutely flat out false. All right, let's go to the next part. Anything that elevates. Did you guys catch that? Did you catch that? That, that, that elevates. She was about to say insulin because that's one of the biggest reasons why ketogenic diet works so well. Anytime you can reduce insulin, you reduce fat storage, you reduce inflammation, and it's much healthier for the body. Whenever there's cases of increased insulin in the body, that's when you start to see a lot of disease forming. So this is a huge point when she went, you have elevated and then changed the subject to something else. All right, let's go to the next part. You've got about 20 grams of carbohydrates a day that you're ingesting, which is essentially nothing. It's about 80 calories worth of carbohydrates out of what could be anywhere from a 1,600 to 2,500 calorie a day diet. So that's nothing, right? And it throws your body into a state of emergency. That's what ketosis is. All right, guys, I am pulling my hair out on this one. If I had hair, I'd be pulling it out right now because the ketogenic diet and going into ketosis is not an emergency. This is what we were designed to do. This is what our ancestors did. When, you know, when they, it was either feast or famine, they didn't know when they were going to find food. Sometimes they had a lot of food in plenty. They had maybe a lot of meat. They were able to find some vegetation and things like that, maybe some berries, some nuts, some seeds, things like that. They were feasting. And then there were times when they didn't eat. Our bodies had to learn how to adapt to that. And that's why our bodies have a dual fuel source system. When there's carbohydrates and it's in plenty, we will burn glucose for fuel. But when we don't have carbohydrates or they're reduced, our body turns to fat storage. Our body turns to fat and converts it into ketone bodies. That's how this works. You know, to think that this is a state of emergency, that's absolutely I'm sorry, that's, that's ludicrous. That's absolutely crazy. This is the way our ancestors have been eating for hundreds of thousands of years. It's not a state of emergency. In fact, many times we are in and out of ketosis and you don't even realize it. Maybe you had a, you know, a very early dinner the day before and then you end up not eating till later in the next day. Your body blew through some glycogen storage and you maybe were into ketosis right there. Babies are into ketosis many times. So this is something that is just insane that it's an emergency when this is absolutely the way our bodies are designed to work. All right? But once again, maybe she just doesn't understand the physiology of how the body works. 
All right, let's go to the next clip before I pull more hair out here. And because we don't have any glucose or glycogen, any blood sugar or stored blood sugar, we turn to fat quickly. We produce ketones and the idea is we burn through fat and we lose fat fast. And that is true, right? And you would think that would be a good thing. Okay, guys, and, and somehow that's not a good thing that we turn to fat for fuel. Joe Mercola, uh, Dr. Joe Mercola, has got a fantastic book out right now that I highly recommend getting. It's called Fat for Fuel. That's what our bodies are designed to do. You're supposed to turn to fat for fuel and start burning fat storage and start getting rid of fat. I mean, who doesn't want to lose weight? But you know what? Do it in a healthy way. You want to make sure you're doing it in a healthy way where you're increasing lean muscle mass and burning fat. That's perfectly fine. I don't know why, you know, like she said, it's, that's a good thing. That's what we want, right? All right, let's go to the next clip. And in addition, people will say, well, I reversed my type 2 diabetes. Of course, you know, your insulin level is through the floor. You're consuming zero carbohydrates, so you have no blood sugar, so your pancreas is not releasing insulin. And this can also affect conditions like polycystic ovarian syndrome. And, you know, by virtue of that connection, it could also affect fertility. Fair. Let's give it that. Well... <laughs> Thanks for the credit on that one. I appreciate you actually giving keto some credit, which by the way, you don't see keto advertised in all these different places. You don't see it uh, you know, coming out by the mainstream media or doctors or the American Medical Association. This is grassroots. It's grassroots and it's spreading like wildfire. Why? Because it works. It absolutely works. People want to lose weight, reverse disease, reverse PCOS, help with their insulin sensitivity, maybe reduce or re, you know, reverse diabetes, even cancer it's, it's looking at it's very good for because your body burns uh, fat for fuel where cancer likes to burn sugar for fuel. So if you reduce the sugar out of your system, your body can even reverse cancer. So yes, thank you so much for the shout out that it does reverse disease because that's one of the biggest proponents of it. See, a lot of times people look at keto like it's really all about weight loss. It's not just about weight loss. It's about getting healthy. And that's really what this is about. This is not a fad diet. It's really a healthier way to eat the way we're designed to. That's really what it comes down to. All right, let's cue up the next part of the tape. But here's what we're not talking about. There's zero calorie restriction on a ketogenic diet. What? Zero calorie restriction on a ketogenic diet. That's absolutely insane. Let me tell you something. One of the best things that keto is good for is it mimics fasting. Intermittent fasting or any kind of fasting. When our body goes into a fasting state, we have to switch because we start to lose all of our glycogen reserves from the muscle and from the liver. So now we have to turn to fat for fuel. So when we start to burn fat, our body goes into a state of ketosis this is a great thing because it's all about calorie restriction. In fact, one of the amazing things about how the ketogenic diet works is it's really not a diet of deprivation. It's not a diet to where you're restricting calories. It's more about the fact that your body becomes satiated. It does much better when it's burning fat for fuel. It's a lot cleaner fuel source. It's less inflammatory. And at the same time, you're never hungry. You ask anybody on a ketogenic diet who's doing it right, doing it properly, they're never hungry hungry. They're like, I'm so full, I didn't even want to have dinner. That was the case for me last night. I didn't really want to eat dinner. I had some. I made some steak and some asparagus, and I poured olive oil on it. I put butter on it. I made a great salad. You know, and if you watch my video on, on cooking, I made some chicken, some Brussels sprouts, and so on. I mean, that was a great dinner. So there's really nothing about uh, this whole calorie restriction thing is absolutely ridiculous. And so it's, it's once again, it just goes to show she really doesn't know what she's talking about with this. And like I said, I'm trying to be nice, but I have to be real here too. You know, the other thing I wanted to mention too, uh, before I go to the next clip, is really when it comes to calorie restriction, diets of deprivation don't work. That's why the biggest loser diet, do you ever see reunion shows with that? Let's show follow up. Like if you watch the show Shark Tank, there's always updates. Let's show you how our, our businesses are doing. When it comes to The Biggest Loser, you never see update shows. You never see reunion shows. And you know why? Because they put all the weight back on. Uh, the New York Times reported on this, that these people put the weight back on. In fact, their metabolism slowed down so much that they actually put in on more weight than they had before. That the amount of calories they typically burned in a day when they started the diet was reduced by the time they were done with the show. And then at the bottom, 
their, their, their weight's coming back. So six years later or so, their weight's coming back and their metabolisms are more and more sluggish. The other thing about a calorie restriction diet is this. Once again, it doesn't work. It's not sustainable. You can't restrict calories and have somebody stick to it. People are going to get so hungry, they're going to eat the leather off their couch. I mean, they're going to start to look at small animals and children around because they're going to get so ravaged, okay? So diets of deprivation do not work. Weight Watchers doesn't work. You have to make sure that the body is eating right, eating healthy, and really eating what it's designed to eat. And that is a higher fat diet, moderate protein, and lower carb. You do that, you really don't have to count calories. And that's the beauty of this. If you're eating properly, you don't count calories. You just know that when you're satisfied and you're full, you're done. And then when you're hungry again, you eat again. Or if you want to fast longer and burn even more weight or, or um, affect the body metabolism even better, you know, you fast as long as possible. But it's really not about calorie restriction because, as you can see, that doesn't work too well. All right, let's go to the next slide. So you have a massive amount of oxidative stress. Okay, let's talk about oxidative stress, all right? We're talking about reactive oxygen species, ROS, which is free radicals. That's really all she's talking about there. We all know about free radicals. Here's how it works, guys. Saturated fats and high fat diets actually reduce inflammation in the body. And that's really what it's all about. What actually increases oxidative stress to the body is when you use these polyunsaturated fats, these PUFAs, because they have many, many what we call double bonds in the carbon chain. And when there's double bonds, it makes the fat a whole lot more reactive and a whole lot more prone to go rancid or oxidate. Also, too, when you add a lot of carbohydrates to your diet, whether it be you know, your healthy whole grains or your processed refined carbohydrates, that's what increases this oxidative stress to the body. It's not the fat. In fact, higher fat diets have been proven to lower oxidative stress to the body. Okay, once again, let's go to the next clip. There's no consideration of timing with regard to food, so your autophagy process is totally out of whack. Now guys, that's just flat out wrong, okay? When you say there's no timing in a ketogenic diet, like I said, the whole concept behind the ketogenic diet is it's fast mimicking. It mimics the fasting process. So when you throw in intermittent fasting with the ketogenic diet, you've got the best of both worlds because you limit what you eat between, say, 8 p.m. at night till about noon the next day, and that's when you start to eat. That's when you eat your one to two, maybe three meals a day. So to say that it's not timed properly, once again, that's just ignorance. And the other thing, too, autophagy. What is she referring to about that? Well, the body's got an amazing way to clean out old, worn out cells. So when the body feels that it's in a fasting state, what it does is it scavenges for raw materials all over the body, which is old, worn out cells. So it cleans these cells out, making the body fitter and stronger, getting rid of the old, worn out cells and keeping the healthy new cells. So that's what autophagy is. And intermittent fasting and the ketogenic diet are two of the best ways to do that. So once again, Again, I'm sorry, but this is outright wrong. All right, let's go to the next part because I'm starting to get really agitated here. Anyway, let's move on. In addition to that, it's very high in animal fats and animal proteins. <laughs> and there's a problem with that, that it's high in animal fats and animal proteins. But once again, she had half of that right. It's high in animal fat and moderate animal proteins. And really, if she really knew what she was talking about, she would know about the Framingham study. And this was a study, probably one of the biggest studies this country has ever done. It's very well known, and it went on for about 40 years. So this study is really world renowned. And it's a study that was conducted in Framingham, Massachusetts. And why they picked there was because it looked like the best slice of middle America. It just represented middle America, what most Americans were eating and doing and thinking and living. So that's why they chose that. And so the study went on for about 40 years, and they picked two different groups. And in one group, they gave high cholesterol, high fat diets. And another group, they gave low cholesterol, low fat diets. And then what they did is they looked at the results every two years, and they plotted that all the way through over 40 years. So this is not a little quick flash in a pan study. This study really, really is monumental when it comes to how cholesterol and how fats affect our bodies. But look at what they found here. 
the more saturated fat one ate, the more cholesterol one ate, the more calories one ate, the more uh, one ate, the lower the person's serum cholesterol was. Now that's groundbreaking. Wait, that, that totally flies in the face of what they thought was going to happen in this study. It goes on to say, they found that the people who ate the most cholesterol, ate the most saturated fat and the most calories, weighed the least, and were the most physically active. What? You're going to tell me they weren't some big, overweight, obese slug sitting on couches because of all the fat they ate? The answer was no. That's not the case. They were actually the fittest because they were using their body's best fuel source. If you think of it like this, carbohydrates are like kindling wood. And if you've ever made a fire, use kindling wood. And kindling is just quick energy. Logs are the long burning energy. Logs have more calories in it. That's just like the fat in your body. So the carbohydrates are quick bursts of energy. The logs are the long duration, cleaner form of energy. Carbohydrates are a lot more uh, dirty in how they burn. Okay? Fats are a lot cleaner in how they burn, especially the, the saturated fats. So let's move on because, you know, once again, we're talking about cholesterol here. Cholesterol has gone through a whole makeover, and, it, and rightfully so. If you want to really see what cholesterol is about, I encourage you to watch one of my previous videos on what's the real truth about cholesterol. So check that one out, and I may put the link down below. But you can see cholesterol has gone through its villain days, then its happy days, and now we're looking at it saying, hey, this whole argument against fat was flawed. It was all wrong. Once again, it was started by Ansel Keys back in the 50s where they said that in the fat lipid hypothesis, not the fat lipid law, it was a hypothesis back then that fats and saturated fats clogged our arteries, increased, increased cholesterol, and actually caused heart disease. And what they're finding now is the exact opposite. We need fats. So in this Time Magazine article, they literally go on to say for decades fat was the most vilified substance in the American diet and how they were wrong. The argument against fat was completely flawed. What they ended up finding instead was this, that it's the processed refined carbohydrates that actually cause the diabetes, the obesity, the cancers. That these refined carbs that we were told to eat in the 70s and 80s to get on your healthy whole grains, that's what's really creating all, all the major health issues today when it comes to diets. So once again, she's completely wrong with this one. Let's go on to the next clip. So we're seeing that diets rich in saturated fats are poor for our telomeres. All right, guys, so now what she's saying is diets that are rich in saturated fat are poor for our telomeres. Well, what the research really shows is there's two things that can decrease telomere length. And really what the telomeres are is if you think of it like this, if you think of your DNA, like the strands they are, and then the very tips at the end, those are your telomeres. And telomeres have to do, as far as their length, with your longevity. The longer the telomeres, the longer you live. That's how simple it is, okay? So what it says here is researchers found that the inflammation and oxidative stress is what causes the telomere lengths to shorten. So what, once again, increases oxidative stress and inflammation? High carbohydrate diets, which by the way, in all of her books, she talks about calorie restriction and eating your healthy whole grains. The biggest loser was eating their healthy whole grains. So what increases oxidative stress in the body are mainly a couple of different things. Toxins can be a third, but your carbohydrates, refined processed carbohydrates, and also to anything that causes oxidative stress, which could be fats. So your fats and your refined carbohydrates cause both inflammation to the body, especially your vegetable oils, things like that, which are people are always recommended eating. Watch Wesson and your canola oils. These vegetable oils are horrible, horrible oils. They should be banned. It's not just the trans fats we're talking about. It's these other types of oils that they typically hydro uh, hydrogenate. All these oils are typically very rich in omega-6 fats and are highly, highly inflammatory. So these types of things will actually decrease telomere length, whereas the ketogenic diet will increase telomere length. Next. Oxidative stress, increased inflammation. Once again, guys, she's completely wrong on that one. Oxidative stress and inflammation are actually reduced by eating healthy, quality fats. And what I'm talking about is your grass-fed beef fat, avocados, avocado oil, coconut, coconut oil, coconut butter, olives, olive oil. All these healthy fats are exactly what you want to incorporate in your diet. And those will actually decrease your inflammation. Think about this. 
you know, a lot of you guys out there that are doing the ketogenic diet, you don't feel so bloated when you eat these types of foods, do you? You actually feel good. Your stomach's flattening out. But meanwhile, whenever you, you know, cheat a little bit, have a little bit of a cheat day or a treat day, and go back and eat some grains, some of your healthy whole grains, that's typically where you start to feel bloated again. Isn't that right? That's when you start to feel like you're inflamed again. So in reality, it's the exact opposite of what she's saying. The healthy whole grains cause the inflammation when the ketogenic diet lowers inflammation. And that's what you want. Next clip. Uh, your nutrient sensing pathways that are related to the health of your metabolism are overrun with constant food, heavy fats, lots of animal protein, and on, we know it hurts your telomeres, and on and on and on. Okay, here's how the nutrient sensing pathways are really affected by your grains. What most people don't realize is that, and research has been done on this, uh, Dr. Davis wrote about it in his book, Wheat Belly. And how it works is this, when your body takes in carbohydrates in the form of your healthy whole grains, your whole wheat bread, it breaks it down in something called an exorphin. An exorphin is an exogenous morphine, meaning it's something from outside the body, okay? So it's not morphine, it's an exogenous morphine or an exorphin. They then call the exorphin that was produced when they broke down bread in a chemical laboratory, they called it gluteomorphine because this gluteomorphine was able to get through the blood-brain barrier and bind to the same receptor sites in your brain as heroin and opium do. So if you want to talk about something that hijacks your metabolic pathways so that your body doesn't know if it's hungry or not, you start to look at this. You start to look at the fact that when you get hooked on bread, and people tell me this all the time, you know what, Dr. Nick? You know, I don't need the sugars, I don't need the candy, but I can't get off the bread. The bread, it's like I'm hooked on the bread, I'm addicted to the bread. Why? Because when it's broken down, it breaks down to something called gluteal morphine, which binds to the receptor sites in your brain as heroin and opium do. And how they found this out was that when people would go into the hospital with a heroin addiction or, or strung out, they would give them a drug called naloxone. And as soon as they gave them that drug naloxone, it broke that connection in their brain and they felt better. They came off of the high. Well, when they started giving out to people who, after they had bread, they found that they weren't getting high after eating the bread which you typically see, by the way. You start to feel good after you have that sandwich or that muffin or that bagel, and next thing you know, you're flying high for a little while, and then you come about two, two hours later, you're starting to crash, and you need another fix, so you go get another muffin or another piece of bread or another cookie or a cracker to get yourself back up again. That is messing with your pathways. That's the bigger problem. Unlike healthy fats, which actually makes your body feel happy and healthy and satiated. So you're not looking for the next quick fix like sugars typically do. Not only that, you get that insulin spike and you come back down. You don't want sugars in your body. It's not the best fuel source. It's not the cleanest fuel source. So once again, she's wrong on that one too. It's a shame. She's wrong on a lot of this stuff. Anyway, what's the next part? Now, what about the benefits? Is it worth it? Let me tell you, the number one way to sensitize somebody's body again to insulin is exercise. All right, cut the tape, cut the tape. The best way to create better insulin sensitivity and reduce insulin resistance is exercise? No. She's partially right because it's the second best way to do things. So when you exercise, that's the second best way to create better insulin sensitivity and reduce insulin resistance. By far the best way is through diet. By taking the inflammatory foods out of your diet, taking the toxins out of your diet, which by the way, your cells, and this is another big thing of why you need healthy fats in your diet, because she talks in the beginning of the video about the fact that we're removing food groups, we're removing carbohydrates. So like I said, the body in no way, shape, or form is made of carbohydrates. Okay? It's made of fatty acids, nucleic acids, and proteins, those three things. It's really not made of carbohydrates. Your body can manufacture carbohydrates. So what she's saying here is really, really completely wrong. It's not true at all. I've been doing this a heck of a long time. <laughs> I've reversed type 2 diabetes. I've helped people get off all medications for type 2 diabetes and PCOS and get pregnant after years of trying and failing through a common sense diet where we don't eat too much, we eat real food, and we have balanced macronutrients. So I can give you all those benefits with none of the negative side effects of keto. 
Once again, none of the negative side effects of keto. Well, once again, we have to look at the source here. And what we see with Jillian Michaels is she's all about pushing the products. Maybe that's why she made the video. I don't know. Maybe it was cutting into her profits a little bit. I don't know. I don't want to speak for her. But I could tell you one thing. She's had three lawsuits because of her diet pills. One of the things you need to know about diet pills, especially fat burners, is they can affect the heart. So someone who's so big on doing things healthy and doing things with a, a, you know, that is sustainable and a good diet and a healthy way without side effects, how do you push and promote this kind of stuff? I don't get it at all. It doesn't add up, especially for the fact that they're saying that the cocktail that she created here in weight loss was potentially lethal, that some of the ingredients were potentially lethal. So once again, you know, I got to really question the source here. Not only that, as I mentioned before, the biggest loser, you don't see reunion shows. These people aren't coming back because they put all the weight back on. Reports say that 95% of the people have put the weight back on or more. Why? Because they slowed their metabolism down. When they first started The Biggest Loser, they were consuming about, or their metabolism was burning about 2,600 calories a day. By the time they were done with the competition, they were down to 2,000. What they found, though, when they checked these patients or these contestants six years later, that their metabolisms had slowed even slower than when they were done at the end of the show. They were down to 1,900 calories a day. So that means that they can't even sustain what they were doing because you can't, you know, calorie restrict a bad lifestyle. You can't restrict these calories on people too much. They're going to absolutely be ravaged for hunger. They're not going to stick with this. It's unsustainable. Like I said, they're going to eat the leather off a couch if you get hungry because I tell you what, you know what I'm talking about. You start to be on a calorie restricted diet. You, you're out of control. Your cravings become so much because your body's saying to you, no, 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 I'm overriding you. I want you to eat right now, so I'm going to make these cravings so hard, and they're going to hit you in the middle of the night while you're sleeping that you're going to want to go downstairs and, and just devour a pizza or make a whole sandwich or a pint or a gallon yet of ice cream, and you know this is the case. So like I said, their metabolisms had slowed. You can't calorie restrict. You've got to get on a healthy diet like the keto diet, which you increase your healthy fats, healthy fats. And like I said, I'm all about keeping keto simple and at the same time keeping it clean. I'm not into really dirty keto. I want to keep it clean where you have healthy quality fats, healthy quality proteins, and lots and lots of vegetables, right? Carbohydrates in the form of your vegetables. That's the way you want to go, guys. That's the way that it's sustainable because you know what? You get done eating on a keto diet, a keto dinner, and you are full. You're full. You're not looking for something an hour or two later. And if you are, have some bulletproof coffee. Okay, you have some of those. But not only that, like I said, why is she bashing keto so much? I don't know. Maybe because, like I said, it's cutting into her profits a little bit. When you have things like books and you have apps that, like I said, I've heard, I don't know if it's true, that the apps, you have a monthly subscription to it, maybe as high as $15 a month, and you're selling products like this, like fat burners, it just doesn't make a lot of sense. So I really don't take what she said with a lot of authority. So guys, like I said, I did this video because I was getting too many questions. So many people wanted to know about keto. I didn't want you getting false information or wrong information that turns you away from it when it can literally save, change, and transform your life and those of your family and those are the ones you love. So guys, I hope this is good information for you. If it was, and I hope you watch it to the end, please make sure you like, you share, you comment, and you subscribe. Thanks again, guys. I love and appreciate you. Thanks for helping my channel just grow by leaps and bounds. I mean, like, it's, it's a lot of subscribers every day, and I just thank you so much for that. So let me know how I'm doing. And once again, guys, God bless. Have a great day. Bye-bye.